I am 85 to 90% sure that leptin is one of the reasons you're having a hard time controlling appetite. It's just flat out simple fundamentals. Now, we're seeing some more evidence helping us understand how leptin works, but leptin is one of the more complicated things. However, this is some of the most promising, if not the most promising research that I've seen talking about how leptin really works, particularly with a fat cell and connecting to the brain. And I encourage you to think about it like this for a second first before we get into it. Actually, you know what? I'll tell you exactly what it is. I'm talking about calcium, but you can't just like jump into taking calcium randomly. I mean, there's some nuance there. And I just also want to give the answer up front. I feel like we're all kind of bait and switched on YouTube these days. So the answer is calcium. But if you don't mind, stick with me so that I can explain how it works. And also drop a comment down below for the algorithm. Let's talk about how it works really fast. If you have a fat cell, that fat cell is going to secrete leptin. And that leptin is supposed to tell your brain that you're perfectly satiated and that the brain doesn't need to trigger hunger because, hey, there's fat on hand. The problem is we have way more fat on hand than we are really supposed to. And the leptin is just pumping out all the time, talking to the brain, and the brain is tuning it out. It's called leptin resistance. So even if the fat cells were producing more leptin to try to tell us to not be hungry, the brain wouldn't listen anyway. And I've got some fun analogies that'll help it make sense and how calcium sort of works here. So let's go ahead and just jump right into the research. After today's video, I popped a link down below for fatty 15, which is a particularly unique saturated fatty acid called C15. Now you can get it from the diet. You can get it in dairy. I always tell people that, but getting it in a supplemental form gets you like a quick bolus of it. It's the same kind of fat that's in like Pecorino Romano cheese, like Sardinian cheeses that really have a lot of good quality saturated fat in it. This particular saturated fat is being linked with longevity. As a matter of fact, it might be the reason the Sardinians have such a high amount of centenarians, people that live up to or over 100 years old. Anyway, really interesting in the longevity realm there, but also some new evidence coming out just on just basic life and possibly even fat loss. So I put a link down below for 15% off using code THOMAS. So 15% off their subscription starter pack with Fatty15, which again, is a C15 unique isolated fatty acid that you would normally get from a particular sort of uh, dairy sources and things like that. So that link is down below in the top line of the description, probably in the top two or three supplements that I would recommend if I had to create a longevity stack. So that link is down below. So to understand how calcium plays a role here first, we need to talk about what is happening inside an actual fat cell. What's wild, when we do not eat enough calcium, when we have low dietary calcium, we actually end up with more calcium in a fat cell. So it's called intracellular or adipose intracellular calcium. And it sounds like that calcium is good, then don't you want it in the cell? Kind of, but it sequesters and goes into the fat cell, okay? Now, when it goes into the fat cell, it actually blocks lipolysis to a certain degree, meaning it's hard to burn that fat. Okay, what we have found now in the research, which we'll talk about in a little bit, there's one particular study in FASEB journal that looked at this in mice, but there's strong human data too. What they found is that increasing dietary calcium decreased the amount of intracellular calcium in the fat cell. When this happened, it decreases fatty acid synthase, which is what forms new fat, by up to 65%, and it decreases, or excuse me, increases lipolysis by two to three X. So it increases how much of the fatty acids are liberated out of a fat cell, out of a triglyceride. What that means is you now have a smaller fat cell. A smaller fat cell releases less leptin. So remember what I was saying, leptin tells your brain that you are satiated. Well, why would you want less? Wouldn't you want more? The problem is when we pump out more, it tunes the brain out even more. So it's again, it's like the brain just doesn't even want to listen to what leptin has to say. But when you start secreting less leptin, the brain starts to turn off its shield a little bit and starts to communicate with the fat cell better. So the way that I've described it before is think of it like two countries that are, I don't know, they're fighting with each other. And all you want them to do is sit down and talk because you know if they could just sit down and talk, maybe things could be reasonable and maybe ground could be made one way or another, but at least you're not in deadlock where you're not talking to each other. Or another analogy is the pesky ex-girlfriend that's just calling you off the hook or ex-boyfriend calling you off the hook and you just don't even want to answer. 
Okay, but when you have a smaller fat cell, that person's calling you less and your sensitivity to them might increase a little bit. Now, what calcium is, is calcium almost acts as like someone that's diplomatic stepping in for a minute and saying, hey, pump the brakes, stop hounding them, let's talk about this like reasonable people. So the calcium steps in, sort of shrinks the fat cell in this case, and the less leptin is secreted, and then the fat cell can suddenly start talking to the brain a little bit. Okay, and when this communication with the brain starts, then the inflammation with around the hypothalamic region can come down because leptin can increase inflammation if it's high. And all of a sudden, you've got communication starting. Next thing you know, the fat cell is communicating with the brain and the brain is able to say, all right, pump the brakes on the appetite here. So much so that we have seen it in the literature, that there was a study that was published in the Proceedings of Nutrition Society that took a look at humans and it had them consume 500 milligrams of calcium mixed in with orange juice with breakfast compared to placebo. The calcium group and not the placebo group ended up eating 116 calories on average less at lunch, which doesn't sound like much, but that's actually a ton in a research situation, like such a noble improvement. Okay, they found that appetite just went down. And they've also seen in other studies that weight regains significantly less after weight loss if calcium's on board. So what we're finding with this is that a lot of it has to do with the simple leptin signaling. Smaller fat cells equal less leptin, which equals better leptin sensitivity and no more leptin resistance. This could be very, very powerful for us. You're in essence rebalancing the appetite homeostasis. Now let's talk about how to use calcium. And I've talked about this many times before, but calcium is something you wanna take usually in the morning, because it's gonna control your appetite throughout the day. Now we're seeing more and more research unfolding, basically showing that dietary calcium, getting calcium from food is the best way. Okay, so good quality cheeses. Again, I recommend things like aged Pecorino Sarda or Pecorino Romana, Romano, excuse me. Uh, even Parmesan is gonna be good. Like any goat cheese is gonna be the best because you're getting more of the C15 fats, which I mentioned earlier, but you're also still getting that calcium. And when it's broken down and when it's easier to digest because you've got the probiotics and the microbial effect, cheese is just the way to go. So you wanna go for the aged cheeses, eat a little bit of the eggshell, sardines with the bone, things like that to get calcium, connective tissue like gristle that's gonna be in the actual like ground beef, things like that are gonna be really, really powerful for you. Now, this can be hard to do for a lot of people. So calcium supplementation, 500 milligrams at a time, start in the morning. And if you need to bump up to a thousand, try to do it in one sitting versus throughout the day. So you get more of that appetite suppressing effect. Again, more research needs to be done here, but the body is essentially trying to get adequate calcium in because it's so critical. So our appetite might just stay high until we get enough calcium. Give it a shot. Personally, anecdotally, I tried it. My appetite's usually under control, but I actually noticed it even more. So personal, honest experience, it does work. It could be from milk, it could be from protein shake, whatever you wanna get your calcium from. As always, keep it locked in here. I'll see you tomorrow.